Welcome to BST Live, the show for systematic and algorithmic traders. Today, we're going to be talking to Brent Penfold, a person who's been on the show many times before. I'm really excited about this. We're going to be talking about techniques you can use to have a, uh, I guess, a multi-dimensional view of the markets. So you can make sure that you're trading in the direction of the big picture or does it even matter? Well, we're going to find out today from Brent. Welcome, Brent. It's good to Hi. see you here again. Thank you. Oh, um, very happy to be here and thank you for having me. It's been such a long time. Uh, I know, uh, well, at least a year, I think now. So it's been a yeah, while since we've we had a chat. Yeah, um, spoke when my um, latest book came out. So that would have been just over 12 months ago. Yeah, right. And a lot has happened in the market since then, which we're, uh, we're going to dig into a little bit and see mm -hmm. how it, it can, in fact, um, impact trading and investing decisions. So uh, the title of the show is all about the big picture and how to, you know, identify and assess the big picture to make sure that we're, uh, or to use it to guide our investing and trading decisions. And this was all based on a working paper I saw on your website, um, which mm -hmm. I found quite interesting. So mm -hmm. we're going to dig into that a little bit as well. But how about, firstly, just to give us a bit of context, you, can you explain in 30 seconds, uh, give us a little bit of your background so that we understand what type of trader you are and how this might fit into what you do? Sure. Um, I've been involved in markets for over 35 years. Uh, probably for the first 15 minutes, I was a discretionary trader. Um, <laughs> with, I was attempting to be a discretionary trader. Did you say 15 minutes? <laughs> Did you say Sorry? 15 minutes? So no, it's like 15 years. Oh, okay. I thought I had minutes. <laughs> My mistake. I should, have, I should have. I should have restricted it to 15 minutes. <laughs> um, I should have. That was that was a big mistake. That was my big mistake. So um, I started off like a lot of people discretionary, and in the mid 90s, I was going nowhere with essentially uh, Elliott Wave. I did introduce geometry that improved it, but still no success. And then, uh, long story short. I moved into looking at short-term uh, price patterns and then started to think, you know, identify um, you know, how, how often they would occur in a sample group and, and, and what was probability. And I basically led myself into becoming a mechanical or a systematic trader. For the last 25 years, I'm a, a systematic trader and I try and keep an open mind on, on everything because you just don't know where an idea, an idea will come from. But once I get an idea, I validate, and I scrutinise it, and I bring it in um, to a, a mechanical arena. And if it's got an edge, I'll embrace it. If I, if it doesn't have an edge, and I will say most things I look at don't have an edge, um, it's mm. not a waste of time because I know, you know that was a false road. That was a cul-de-sac. It went nowhere. Um, so last 25 years, I'm a mechanical trader. Okay, excellent. Well, thanks for that uh, quick background on yourself. Now, um, as I mentioned, the, the title of the show is about the big picture, and you've mm -hmm. got a couple of techniques and concepts you're going to share with us, which I think are, are really exciting to to mm -hmm. uh, review. But before we even get to that, how about can you give us a bit of insight into why you think it's really important to um, you know assess the big picture in your trading and what happens if you don't? Oh, absolutely. Um, it's because we, we can we, we can we can you know fall into the trap of just thinking that our personal existence is the whole existence and it's not you know you know where we live in a little little um cubicle uh it's very important to us um but you know we're just just a lot of speck on the back of an you know an elephant's bottom same thing with trading <laughs> we can become really really um you know comfortable and very knowledgeable about a particular time frame where we're where, where, we're, where we're trading and then things can happen and we go well, what happened there uh, and if we're taking the time to take a step back and, and look from a more holistic or a higher um, point of view, you'd be going, oh, that was why, why I got surprised. Because it, mm. it was basically a Mack truck coming down a six-lane highway. <laughs> and, you know, of course that's going to have an impact. Yeah. But because we spend so much time looking at our particular Tesla or, you know, whatever car you choose to drive and – you're looking at your single lane, you don't know what's going around you. So it's so important to know what the higher time frames are doing. And today we're going to be talking about the big picture. I'm going to be sharing with you um, my big, 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 big picture. So yeah. the, it's, 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 it's just a, an extension of the number one rule of trend traders, of like trading with the trend. So it's just an extension to that. 
So you're going to be sharing uh, two techniques, I guess, or concepts with us today. Um, mm -hmm. One is called uh, fractals, and then the other one is called the market ladder. Now, uh, as I mentioned at the start, you know this this conversation came out because um, or came about because I uh, I read a um, what's it called a working paper on your website, which was quite interesting. And I know for me, I've, I've kind of uh, looked at fractals before a little bit and not really understood them. And I think you know maybe I've over overcomplicated it as well. But uh, reading your working paper was really quite. Um, you know, interesting. So maybe can you explain a little bit first about, you know, what are fractals and why, you know, why should we pay attention to them? Oh, sure. Fractals just refers to um, the financial markets are called the, they're fractal because they have um, repeating patterns that occur across multiple time frames. So whether you're an intraday trader and you just focus on 10 minutes, 60 minutes, four hour patterns and you're mm. comfortable with that well don't be surprised if you start to look at daily data or weekly data or monthly data that those same patterns are appearing and if you have a pattern in your preferred time frame that gives you an edge well don't be surprised if you look at that preferred pattern on a higher time frame that they'll probably give you an edge in that time frame so fractals just refers to um recognizable patterns or recognizable to you Mm. that occur across all time frames and the reason why it's important to know all time frames is because the higher time frame fractal dominates the lower time frame fractal so it's basically just a repeating pattern that occurs right. across time frames right okay so when you say patterns what do you what exactly are you talking about do you like a price pattern a chart pattern some other kind of pattern can you uh, maybe it, give it give some examples what, what I'm going to be sharing with you is the most simplest price pattern that I know of, but mm. it could be any patterns. It could, for example, um, uh, people are familiar with, you know, um, contractions in the market, triangles, triangles, you know, uh, pennants, flags, right? That's a pattern. You'll see uh, the, the pennant flag across all time frames. Mm. You know, one minute charts, you'll see uh, um, pat, uh, the, the pennant pattern or the, the pennant flag appearing. And you'll see it appearing on the you know the, the hourly charts or the four hour charts or the daily charts, the weekly charts. So it's just you know recognizable patterns that you recognize that they won't just appear or just be exclusive to that particular time frame you're looking at. Right, okay. Um, so th that patterns that you recognize, I think is is an interesting statement. There's been a lot of uh, research out there that that uh, shows that humans are uh, what's the term like pattern based machines I guess you could say we're, we're built to see patterns in things um, and sometimes that can work against us and we see we might think we see patterns that don't actually exist mm -hmm. so how do you identify that if you're looking at fractal patterns and different time frames oh, how do you actually know it's a valid a, thing yeah that's a great question because it's a big criticism towards technical analysis the, the discretionary right. trader We'll, we'll see their, their favorite pattern in anything. They'll even see their, see their favorite pattern in the clouds. Um, <laughs> so uh, it's a big criticism that um, technical technical analysis uh, wears. Now, the good thing for you and I, because we are mechanical traders, is that you know we're open-minded. We'll, we'll look at everything and go, oh, that's interesting, that pattern. But what we'll do is we'll try and we'll bring that pattern into our lane. And our lane says we have to have really clear rules on how we define that pattern, right? So that the computer yeah. coding can, can know what shape it is and, you know, how we recognize it. So um, that's the benefit of, you know, the lane that we live in, that where we are mechanical. So we'll bring our, bring our, our, our formality, our, our, our structures to ensure that we don't fool ourselves. Yeah, yeah. So when you're saying uh, like you're looking at a higher time frame for these patterns before mm. you know mm. um, before you look at the lower time frame, how do you is there a, like a special time frame the the higher one should be? Is there like a ratio between the higher and the lower, or how do you oh, got, how do you pick I, I, which is which? Well, well I've, I've prepared a, a brief presentation I'll, I'll share with you shortly, okay. and you'll see you'll see the time frames I use, and so um, but. For the really big picture, and the reason why I wrote that paper, I wrote that paper because obviously I watched the big picture, right? And 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 you know, 
the S and P was at an unbelievable juncture in terms of my big picture, and my big picture was telling me, you know, move into cash, and I've been in cash since then. I got no mm-hmm. share, none, and and I just thought, um, you know, I'll share that, and, and my, my my paper, um, I think my paper's called, you know, fractals. You know, are we listening? You know, are we listening to what the market's telling us? Yeah, because the market's telling us on a big, big, big picture, there's a twenty eight wheeler, big, you know, big Mac coming down, a, you know. The, Eight lane highway, and yep. you're having a picnic on the side of the road. You may want to, you know, prepare yourself. Get out of the way. <laughs> big Mac past you, right? Yeah. So, um, so that, that was a time, and I did that in February. Um, you know, basically, the, the the big picture was telling me, you know, you don't. If you weren't out of the market, you want to really tighten your stops, really bring your stops up. Mm, yeah. If so you can like. actually. Oh, sorry, Brent. Go on. No, no, I'm just saying tighten your stops. If you're long in the market, you know, it was time to be extra, extra cautious. Mm, yep, yep. So we're actually going to, a little bit later, I think, um, have a look at what the market's been doing and see how it fits into some of this bigger mm-hmm. picture analysis. Um, but uh, just, a, an, I guess, um, you know, something that, I, I don't know, if I haven't actually tested this, so I don't know if this is true or not, but uh, traders often say that lower timeframes are noisier than the higher time frames, which implies then that the fractal nature is a little bit off. What do you say about the what that kind of criticism to fractals? Oh, I'd say with more ideas, it all comes down to you know, validation. Right. Validation, yeah. And what I'm about to share with you, um, a lot of people will be gobsmacked. And, and <laughs> you know, one expression I, I keep coming to my mind is that what I'm going to show you is that when you see the markets react to these really big time frames, this very simple fractal I have, it's a very simple pattern, right? It works across all time frames. But when you see it hit the biggest time frame that I use, you think it's it's basically fingerprints of the gods. Because mm. wow. these these levels have been known for multiple years in advance. And yet the market just knows all about them and they struggle to get through them. And if they get through them, it's like Put your glasses down, it's off to the races, you know. It's a very bullish or very bearish sign, depending which side you are on those, you know, very um, long-term support resistance levels. Yeah, um, okay. But, 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 you know, validate it. You know, just code it all up. You know, what I'm going to be showing, you know, with you, the, the big picture is basically the big picture is a screen. It's a filter, right? It's a filter. It's not a trading system. It's, you know, everybody can apply it their own way. But essentially, I use it as a filter, you know. Mm. Sure, Tommy, get out of get out of. Out of um, I don't trade shares. I invest in shares, but I'm out of shares. I trade futures, right? Yeah. Uh, so for me personally, it was just I'm listening. I'm you know, I'm getting out. Um, but for traders, um, just code just code things up. You know, independently validate it. You know, yeah. does it have the edge? You know, is there um, you know, um, is the universe of alternative equity curves when you change variable values, are those equity curves stable? Or is it too much flexibility? Is it too much, you know, um, fragility, you know? And if there is, doesn't work. Move mm. on. Yeah, yeah. Um, that that kind of leads into nicely into your second te- technique, which we're going to talk about called market ladder. Um, mm-hmm. But first, just b- before we get to that, um, and I know we're also going to revisit fractals a little bit later in our discussion as well. Yep. It's all going to come together into a, a beautiful um, piece of uh, insight, I guess. But uh, I just wanted to ask, so big picture, does that does that only apply to people who are taking you know, longer term trades? Like what if I was like, oh, I'm a day trader, I trade a five minute chart and I'm out by the end of the day? Yeah, you know, is does big picture matter so much then? If I'm just like oh, yeah, in and out that's really quick, a good point. yeah, because you get at, at the extremes, you get the extremes. Um, this right. fractal I'm going to share with people it works across all time frames. Right. So okay. somebody, so somebody who's going to be a day trader can, you know, obviously use would use their big picture. Maybe what is this particular fractal doing on a weekly time basis? Hmm. They might be, you know what. Understand it's important to understand the high time frames. And if I'm an intraday trader, then you know what? I should be respectful of what the week's doing and, and, and go no higher than the week. Yeah. But, um, you know, if you're a share investor, and you know probably where I've been, 
yeah. and, and just be aware of, you know, is it going to be a 28 wheeler big back truck coming down the road? <laughs> you know? So mm. I, I think you should be aware. Enjoying your picnic because the has been so good. And we've all been enjoying our picnic on this one. Part of this road, uh, something sort of crumbled down the highway. I, I think we'd all like to be aware of it. Um, but if, if people are the day traders, then you know what? Maybe their higher time frame is, is. Yeah, yeah. We've got a uh, an interesting question here from Eli in the chat. Thanks for the question, Eli. Um, does this apply to indicators as well? So we're just talking about patterns previously, but uh, what about indicators? I usually see results are better on higher time frame. Uh, we'll do some more research. Yeah, look, I, I'm going to um, leave that question alone because I'm not a fan of indicators. I'm just, um, you know, I'm not a fan of indicators um, because they've got variables and you can it's, it's self-fulfilling. You, you change the value of a variable and, and you're going to get the answer that you look, look for. Um, but I, I'd say be open-minded. If, if an idea, um, you know, resonates with you, and today, you know, if the only takeaway from today's discussion is that I should be respectful, or be aware of a bigger picture, and I, I understand that's relative. If you're a day trader, maybe a bigger picture is a weekly, maybe a monthly. Um, mm. Then, you know, if you've got a favourite indicator, why not run that favourite indicator over a weekly? weekly time frame or a monthly time frame and see what it's telling you but understand mm -hmm. that as soon as you introduce a variable that can be adjusted by a trader suddenly you're going to you're introducing fragility into your analysis mm -hmm. because you can change that variable value and that and the equity curves that you produce off, off any strategy that you develop will start to shift around you know yeah. and you and, and you don't want any equity curves that can give you a risk of ruin above zero percent. Yep. Okay. All right. Thanks, Brent. Thanks for the question, Eli. Very good question. So um, I want to have a quick chat now about Market Ladder. Now we are going to come back yep. to fractals, and and mm -hmm. um, and you're going to show us some pretty cool examples a little bit later. So uh, we will come back to that. But um, your know, Market Ladder fits in quite nicely to the bigger picture discussion discussion we're having today. So can you explain a little bit about what it what is the Market Ladder? Oh, sure. Um, it's not my idea. I, 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 okay. I discussed that in the presentation. I, I've just rechanged the name. Um, but I just like the name ladder because the ladder gives you, it's, it's very visual. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a visual person. It's, yeah, patterns, right? That's it's, it's what we're, we're um, tuned to do. Uh, is that, you know, a ladder is steps. And, and, and basically the ladder is, is, you know, in the market, market um, terminology is support and resistance levels. And so these support and resistance levels can tell us, um, show, give us a bit of a guide map or a roadmap of where markets could possibly go as they climb up, as they rally, and as they descend, as they fall down. So that's why I call it the ladder, you know, that the, the, these projected support and resistance levels give us an idea of some possible areas where the market will gain support or, or hit resistance. That's, that's why I call it a, a ladder. And it's a very simple um, technique. It's a very, very old technique. It's not my technique. Um, but it works across all time frames, and there's no variables. Mm. Yeah, you've actually got a nice example of a chart in your um, working paper. I might just put that up on the screen yeah, sure. for a minute, and you can uh, just explain this a little bit more. So, this was um, for anyone who wants to get access to this. It's free. It's on Brent's website here, indextrader.com. .au, and then I think it's under education, isn't it? Education insights. Yes. And there's yep. um, this, this fractals, are we listening paper? And check yep. out the others as well. There's a lot of good stuff in there. So yep. that's what we're referencing here. Um, now, I think on the second page, right, you had an example of exactly what you're talking about here, market ladder. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, can you? Yeah, so that, those, those um, horizontal levels, they are, that's the ladder. And they are just projected uh, support and resistance levels, and and the market has a tendency to respect them, and and so um, I think that could be a monthly time frame that one, um, right. and, and you can see how it provided resistance and support, and and that and that level was known at the beginning of the month, right? So 
this tool is forward looking it's not backwards looking so on this yeah. time frame whenever whenever a, a, a time frame begins like when a, a day begins or a week begins or a month begins or a quarter begins or a year begins then um it will it will produce possible support and resistance levels for the whole next period right okay so when it's below a resistance and and uh, you're looking yeah, for lower, yeah, yeah, and it's, above it's, it's support. very simple, very simple yeah. technical analysis. When it's below it, then it will be resistance. If it's below it, it'll be support. And if it breaks down through the support, then you know a broken support will become new resistance. Right. Okay. So I don't know if you can see my mouse here on the screen, but this first resistance uh, could also be a support, right? Because it's above above that support line. Is that? I'm, look, I'm trying to that, look for the cursor. Sorry. Where is uh, the f the first uh, the one the first resistance on the left, where it just hits the top of the the resistance. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The red, it's the red also circle. sitting on the support. So how do you know, like uh, which way it is? Oh, first of all, you give it a big clap because um, those two levels completely encapsulated that daily bar. Um, yeah. So um, now the ladder is not a trading system; it's just a tool. Mm. Okay, it's just a tool to say that. These areas could possibly represent either support or resistance for the next time period. And in this example, it's, I think it's a month. Um, it's not a trading system. But what it's done is the market the market is aware of these levels. I mean, it could be just a coincidence. Probably, probably is. Um, but you yeah. know, you see, you see the the earlier bars were lower, and the market was moving up. So yeah. the short term trend is, is is moving up. And if you're a day trader, you'd want to know. You know, if your higher time frame is a monthly, you will want to know what that monthly resistance is. If you trade off hourly bars or four-hour bars or 15-minute bars, you would want to know what that monthly resistance level is. So right. if you drill down into intraday data and you can see that there's a bit of a spike up and a rejection, you'll go, oh, I think I know why it got hammered. Because on a higher time frame, there is resistance. Mm. Yep. I just want to scroll down this document because I've got a feeling there's some other examples here that might be worth reviewing. So this one is quite a nice example as well. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, it's a longer time frame. I think that's um, that's uh, that's a, could be a quarterly time frame. Yeah. Okay. And scrolling down a bit more. All right. So here's a market. Is this ES? Yes. Yeah. This five hundred. Yeah, this is the S and P five hundred, and this is the reason why I wanted, I wanted to share why I wrote, wrote the document because the timing was just, you know, I'm, you know, just like it's a heads up, everyone. I just had to share it, where you can see um, when the market broke that uh, what was resistance now becomes support, and it rallied right up to the very top. Yeah, right there with resistance. Yep, um, and I just rejected it. And um, and that level that level is basically my longest time frame, and and we'll dig into it shortly. But it's uh, it's enormous. It's basically what I call my my decimal my decimal support resistance or my decimal ladder, which is wow. essentially a ten year support and resistance level, ten years. And that's why I call these levels almost like you know um, you know fingerprints of the gods, right? That's a yeah. ten-year projected support and resistance level. Wow, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know anyone who looks at ten-year support and resistance levels. Uh, the big hedge funds guys do. Wow. Okay. And so you published this research, uh, this working paper. I think it was February, right? Yep. February of this year. So yep. quite mm. early on. So mm. um, I guess it might be. I don't know if you've got an updated chart of this. We can have a look at to see. What actually oh sure. Happened. I think it might um, we can go, go into my presentation and everything's up to date. Yeah. Okay. Um, I just want to scroll down a little bit more. Uh, yeah. I know there's. I think there's another chart, and I can't remember off the top of my head. Sorry, what it was. Mm. Okay. So this. Well, actually, this is the decennial. Yeah, that's yeah, that's the one that's been blow, blowing out, so we can see more. Yeah. Right. So, so what you're seeing there is almost 20, 22 years. Or, oh. Gosh, that's so long ago. 25, 25, yeah, 25, 25 years. 25 years. Yeah. So it's a 25-year chart, and they're basically that's my uh, my decimal ladder, and you can see how these these um 10-year projected support possible support possible resistance lines, how 
how the market is aware of them and how the market respects it and how the market re reacts to it. It's unbelievable. Mm. And look at what the pandemic, the pandemic, we actually went through that support, but it, 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 it you know, reversed, rallied, rallied up. Um, yeah, it's, the market has a memory. Yeah. And this, why well, call it a fractal pattern is because, sure, this is a big 10-year pattern, but you see behavior, the market's behavior around these levels across multiple time frames, daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, yearly. Mm. Okay. So the, the, these examples you've showed us here have been indexes. Is it only yep. work for indexes? What about other markets, other futures markets? Great question. And, and the idea is that, you know, people should apply them to other markets and, and see for themselves whether um, this is just a coincidence that this, this tool only works on the S&P. And when people do the work and actually look to apply it to other markets, they'll be quite surprised. And I'll, I will show some other markets in my, in my presentation. Okay. Yeah, maybe we'll we'll jump to that in a minute. I'm interested to see. So, uh, so in this example that we were just looking at here, I might scroll back up to it. Um, it was 25 years, right, or 27 mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. How far back do you think you need to go to get an accurate reading? Oh, look. Um, the only time frames I look at goes from daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, and yearly, and decimal. Decimal to me is purely for investing. For me personally, it's investing, right? Um, I don't use 10 years for trading. You know, I've, um, you know, I've got a, um, a workshop this weekend where I'm going to be sharing my um, some some of my core models, and I don't need to know what's happening on the 10 year time time horizon, you know, to trade and make money. But in terms of investing, I want to know. I want, to, I want to know the possibility if there's going to be a big truck coming down the highway that's going to you know, get, going to interrupt uh, my picnic. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just going to post in the chat a link to this um, uh, mm -hmm. working paper. Anyone who yeah, wants sure. to download it, and there's a there's a whole bunch of other ones on Brent's website as well, which are <clears> quite <throat> interesting. And you know what I like <laughs> about your stuff, Brent, is it's it's um, quite uh, not not simple, but like it's quite sophisticated as well, but it's not complicated, right? You, you you mentioned before that you just look at patterns. You don't have all these fancy indicators and this and that, and um, yeah. and uh, and then also you you publish your live trading results on the website, which hardly anyone ever does. So I, I admire that as well. But um, so uh, you did mention that you've got some updated slides, and I'm really yeah. keen to see yeah. <laughs> see what's happening now. So I don't know if you do you want to share some now. Sure, yeah, Put yeah, them up yeah. on the screen, let, and we can have a chat about those. Yeah, let me bring it up. All right, um, that'd be great. Okay, I can see you. Let me just put this up on the screen. All right, I can. Yep, we can see the slides. Fantastic. Well, let, let me just spend the next 15, 15, 20 minutes just giving you um, this brief presentation. I will be going quite quickly for, uh, for people, um, but I don't think people should be too concerned because I'm sure you'll put this podcast up on the website somewhere on YouTube and <clears throat> people will be able to go back to this podcast and they can pause it and they can rewind um, this part of the presentation. So if I go a little bit quickly, <clears throat> um, um, please uh, forgive me. So, Brent, sorry, Brent, before you start, there's a, there's a question in the chat here. It's it's a, a yep. good question, and I want to make sure I don't forget it. Sure. So, um, I'll just put this one up on the screen from Eric, and we'll we'll address mm -hmm. this one, and then we'll get back to the slides. Otherwise, sure. I might completely forget, and I don't want to do that. So, here we go. Eric, how do you pro project resistance when price has never reached that level before? Uh, so I think that's right. in, in reference to this example we were just looking at, right? Let me yeah, scroll yeah, back yeah. to it. Yeah. Great question. It's just it just comes down to the tool. Um, what you're about to learn is my my ladder is a very simple tool, and 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 the tool calculates it. And essentially, what it does is it takes the current period. If I'm looking at um, a daily or a monthly or a yearly, it just takes the current period information, takes that information which is price, and it projects it forward. And it, and, it, and it shoots out support and resistance levels. It's it's really quite simple. Um, 
and, and hopefully my presentation will, will show you how simple it is. You make it sound so easy, Brent. Well, it is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Let me put your slides back up on this screen. Yep. Thanks for the question, <laughs> Eric. Good question. All right. <clears throat> We're back. Okay. Um, as I said before, if, I'm, if I go a little bit quickly, I'll apologise uh, now. Um, however, you will have the benefit of going back to this YouTube video that Andrew, Andrew will put up and, and you can yep. pull and rewind it as much as you like. So this presentation is all about um, how I approach the big picture. For me personally, I don't trade shares, I invest in shares. I use the big picture for um, making big decisions about moving um, in and out of the share market. So this is what I do. So I use fractals to help me see the big picture. As part of um, ASIC's disclosure rules, I must let you know that my presentation now is educational only. It does not contain any investment advice. It does not contain personal advice. It only contains general advice. Yep. Fractals simply refer to repetitive patterns occurring across multiple time frames. Now, what you see in the lower time frames, you'll see in larger time frames. Essentially, a fractal is a pattern that repeats forever. Regardless of how zoomed in or zoomed out, it, the pattern, looks very similar, if not identical. If you see a pattern, if you're an intraday day trader, you trade 15-minute charts and you see you know, a pattern we talked about, you know, pennants or triangles, um, you should see those appear in a higher time frame, 60 minutes or four hours or daily. Fractals dictate a market's hierarchy. So higher time frames dominate lower time frames. So the number one takeaway for traders today is that we have to know the higher time frame fractals, fractals because they offer a possible future roadmap. I have a simple fractal pattern I call my market ladder that we've been discussing um, just, just recently. And as I mentioned, it's not actually my idea. I've just renamed it. <laughs> Obviously, I don't have too much time on my hands. So this is it. It's just um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tool that just proje um, projects future uh, levels, which can become either support or resistance. And I call it a ladder because it's amazing how the market will use these levels to climb up or to descend. So my market ladder identifies support and resistance levels where a market can possibly step as it climbs and descends. And being fractal, it can be applied over multiple timeframes, giving me a signpost or a heads up of what to expect ahead. Let's have a look. This is the Australian uh, uh, SPY index futures contract. It's the Australian equivalent of the S&P 500, although it only contains our top 200 shares. Yeah. Let's um, overlay my 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 ladder and as you can see it's identified possible and you know, support and resistance levels and these levels have been known since the beginning of the year and it identifies where the market can possibly step as it, as it rallies and as it falls and as you can see right now look here for the australian market how it gapped above up here it's, it's sitting on this level this is amazing they mm. found support here and the market knows these levels. And look, it's, it's, it's sitting above here. And obviously, if prices break below this support, I'm, I imagine we will see lower prices and this will become resistance. Now, my market ladder, it's a fractal pattern and it appears across multiple time frames. This is the ladder um, on a quarterly time frame. As you can see, we have support here. You can see the resistance here. Let me see. This is a projected resistance level, which it becomes support because the market's above it. Support here, resistance, support. Works across all time frames. This is a monthly time frame where you can see you have these projected resistance, you know, um, you know, support and support. And the market's aware of it. It's support here, support here, resistance up here. And this is my decimal, my 10 year. My 10 year projected support and resistance levels, or just two of them, on our Australian market. Look down here. Look where the Australian market came came down before it rallied. Hmm. Right on the point. It's amazing. These these levels are fingerprints of the gods. And look up here, how the market rejected it. It knew what it was. It rejected it. 
Okay, we're going we're gonna to rally above. It came down. Support, support. This is ten years on this level. Well, it's actually it's projected projected for ten years. It's been known for like a year and a half, almost two years. Hmm. Unbelievable. Now. I'm going to show you what my market ladder is. It represents the simplest fractal pattern there is, price. My pattern is just price. Just price throughout the session. It represents the market itself. It's simply, or I simply take the high, the low, and close, and I, I add 50% extensions projected forward. And for those who have worked out what my market ladder is, Congratulations, you're correct. My market ladder is simply pivot points. I look at pivot points over multiple time frames. Hmm. If I have a daily bar here, I take the high, the low, and the close. I take an average of that, which gives me my pivot point for the next time frame, the next period, and I overlay the previous uh, period's range. If I'm looking at a monthly time frame, I find out what's the highest price for the month, what's the lowest price for the month, what's the close. I average it. It becomes the pivot point for the next month, which can be either support or resistance. And I overlay the period's range equally around the pivot point. That's all it is. My market ladder is simply multiple time frame pivot points. So, Brent, if, if you can just go back there. So are you saying you've got three levels for each of those different periods? So you've got three for daily, three for weekly? That, that... Um, uh, plus 50% extensions. So right. we'll do so. So start off with a simple uh, pivot points, a simple, um, say, for the monthly, a monthly pivot, a monthly a pivot high, and a monthly pivot low. So there's three levels, and they can all be, obviously the high there would be you know, begin as resistance, the low here would begin as support, and this can be either support or resistance depending on whether the market's above it or below it. And then I will add 50% of the range as an extension. Right. So I take okay. half of the range here, and I add 50% above here. And I okay. do that twice. Yeah. So then you could have – so what do you have, three or five per period? So th oh, in terms, of the, in terms of the ladder, you can have yeah. um, oh, three, five levels. So if if you're looking at uh, what's here six you got day week month so there's six there six times five you got thirty levels on the chart or do you just oh, oh, yeah well you wouldn't want to do that because you you wouldn't be able to see the the, the trees <laughs> you know, wouldn't, able to, wouldn't be able to see the woods for the trees um, yeah. that's but it's a good question you don't want to fall into this trap that um, a lot of people who embrace indicators do and they light, light their their screens up with with all these indicators yeah um, got to be sensible. Don't want to over clutter. Um, you know, I, I wrote my paper because, you know, I'm, you know, interested in equities, shares, and I love to know what's happening on the on the de decade level. And so for me, I come from an investing, although I'm a trader, I trade futures. This whole paper, this whole what we're here today, is all driven by sh share investments. Mm. And and my high took my highest time frame for shares is decimal 10 years not yearly not quarterly because for share investments that's too short a time right, right. but from the share investor for me i want to know what's happening on the decimal a, tra a trader who may want to use this as i said before if you're a day trader your higher time frame or big picture time frame may be either a weekly time frame or a monthly right so don't be crazy and go oh my god i've got to work out five five levels across <laughs> six six time frames that that won't work yeah. Thanks for clarifying that, Brent. Yeah, no, no, that was a good question because you know I'm not suggesting that you you throw up 30 lines on your on your screen. <laughs> now it's important to understand what the market's expectations are around pivot points. So we need to understand this. First of all, in my opinion, trends commence from pivot points or value areas. Okay, trends commence from pivot points. Trends will continue until they reach either a support or resistance level. At support and resistance levels. Trends can either, one, rotate back towards their pivot point or value area to recommence a trend continuation or simply reverse. Or they could disrespect that support and resistance level and just break up through it, okay? Mm. Because, you know, support resistance levels, 
there's no law in, in no market law that says that the, the prices have to have to have to respect it right they can just blow it right through it now trends that go beyond a support and resistance level are very strong that's a really important point to understand when prices get beyond resistance or prices get be, uh, the, the move is very strong if prices get below support prices are very weak trends that go beyond support and resistance 50 percent extensions are very very strong okay right. because it means that the market has just got some extra energy they've never had during its previous time period and suddenly it's running so understand that and um broken support and resistance levels become new resistance new support easy peasy now pivot points are as old as time i like pivot, pivot points for three reasons firstly if you read my books, you'll know that I particularly like old approaches for the simple reason they are old. They have lasted the test of time, making them robust. Secondly, they're simple. They don't contain any subjective variables enhancing their robustness, which we can't say about the majority of tools and technical analysis, if we're being truthful. True, yep. And thirdly, they're forward-looking, unlike the majority of backward-looking indicators. I'm a big fan of pivot points, and I first wrote about them in my 2005 book, uh, Trading the Spy. So I look at multiple time frame pivot points, and for my big picture analysis, for, which for me is for share investments, I use a combination of decimal pivots and sentiment markets. Okay, I'll just repeat that. For my big picture analysis, I use a combination of the decimal decimal pivots and sentiment markers so let's see what the decimal pivot points can reveal now this is the s p 500 and i've gone back almost a hundred years okay <laughs> I'm there. wow i'm showing you the 1930s to the 1940s so basically a 20 year period so i want to demonstrate to people that um, i'm not making this stuff up that um these pivot levels, you know, whether they work because there's some magic behind them, or whether they work because the big money players are aware of them, so they become self-fulfilling, I don't know. But I don't care as a trader. I just want to um, believe what I see and, 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 and accept what I see. So let's overlay the decimal point, you know, pivot points, or basically my ladder, and look at that. Now, the dashed line here, the dashed line is the, the pivot level, right, the pivot point. And the right. two lines below it are support, and the lines above are resistance. And you can see here, look at this. Okay, it went through, resistance, fell away, and in, in the 30s rallied up, support, 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 got resistance, support. Unbelievable. And we moved into a new decade, the 1940s. In the 1940s, remember that. Markets basically will rotate back to their, their value area or pivot point before they recommence a trend. It, it rallies through, support, 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 support. Okay? Hmm. This line is 10 years old. So I'm showing you this before we um, move forward to present, present day to say um, this stuff, it works. It's almost 100 years ago. <laughs> Believe what... Um, this is an update of uh, where we are uh, today, <coughs> and you can see this represents 20, 23 years, where you can see all through the 2000s, the decimal um, pivot points projected high resistance and low contained the whole S&P 500. See how it was just rotating around the mean, the pivot point? Unbelievable. And then it takes off. Markets, you know, trends commenced from the pivot point, the value area, came down, got support, took off, um, went through the resistance, came back to test it. Remember, um, breaks, trends breaking resistance are strong. And it comes up to this extension here. Resistance, see how that fell away? It's a big fall there. This is like a 20-year chart, right? It's a big fall hmm. because it was aware of this um, um, extension here. Got through it, resistance support i remember breaks of the resistance extension levels are very very bullish and off she went 
And if you somebody, if people go back through the, the almost like 90 years of um, Dow Jones or S&P 500 data, you'll see over the decades, every second or third decade, you'll see this pattern where prices get above the extension and they just blow off. They just rally like so strong. And then the market always rotates back towards value area, the pivot here. This happened during the pandemic. It overshot it. But then she rallied. Look where she first stopped. At the 10-year projected resistance. Came off, big it rallied, went through it, blew. So strong. And it hit here. And where? And guess where it stopped? It's first stop here. <laughs> this is the fingerprint of the gods. Now, another thing. I also look at for, for share investments is the 1,000 day moving average, the 1,000 day moving average. And right now, in my opinion, the S&P 500 is very well supported. So in my opinion, while prices remain above 3,600, then the market is strong. But if the market cannot hold 3,600, then in my opinion, the market will, con will complete or continue its rotation back to its pivot point or value area, which is 2,500. But right now, the market is very well supported. Now, so the big question is, is it safe to get back into the market? Is the worst behind us? Well, although the market is very well supported, I recommend caution as there doesn't appear to be the usual telltale signs of a major bottom. Let's have a look. Major turning points are usually accompanied by capitulation. This is a chart of the SPDR, which is the largest S&P 500 ETF in the US. And why I love it is because down the bottom here you can see it provides volume. And if you look at all the major turning points where these red lines are, they're all accompanied with a spike in volume. Can you see that? A spike in volume. That's capitulation. That's the weak mm. hand saying, I've had enough, I want to get out. Volume spikes, right? So the market comes down, throws up, volume spikes. The pandemic here, prices come down. Look, there's a, um, there's a spike in volume. And yet, although the markets come down quite a lot here, we don't have any spike in volume. So for me, I've got to be cautious. There's, to me, there's no capitulation. In addition, major turning points are also usually accompanied by what I call credit, credit stress. Now, this chart here is showing the spread between Junk bonds and treasuries. So up here in 2008, at the, at the, in the middle of the, GF, the GFC panic, it's saying here the junk bonds were almost 20% higher than their equivalent treasury bond over the same period. It's fearful, right? So extreme spread expansion is credit stress, it's fear, it's cap capitulation, it usually, usually has reversals. Now, mm -hmm. extreme spread contraction, which is down here, here, so this is where the spread between junk bonds and treasuries is only like two and a half percent. So people who are holding holding these junk bonds are happy to only be um, rewarded by earning an extra two and a half percent for holding these crap bonds, wow. as opposed to U.S. treasuries. And and that's because there's so much complacency, right? People are complacent; they just think that you know good times will continue, and yeah. everyone's everyone's you know chasing yield, so they're prepared to hold these crap junk bonds and only be paid 2% or 2.5% over treasuries for the benefit of holding it. So that these usually um, uh, dictate um, reversals from uh, to the downside in the share market. So right here, right here just recently, see how the spread didn't really blow up? It didn't go anywhere near these levels. So we're missing we're missing a capitulation we're missing any credit stress here i am going to impose these extreme points onto my um my decimal chart of this and p let's have a look this is amazing so extreme <laughs> spread contraction these points here the the the, the uh, orange cubes at the top these represent points when the spread between junk bonds and treasuries was only like two and a half percent. And look at this, look at the timing. Now the top. People, you will not see this anywhere else. Um, wow. And if you had the benefit of seeing this presentation, then um, bookmark this and share it with your kids. <laughs> right, 
But what I'm interested in is not so much the, the complacency and hubris, which leads to reversals. I'm more interested in this credit stress because, you know, I want to get back into the market. And I can see the market in terms of my ladder, my 10-year ladder, is really well supported. I can see the 1,000-day moving average is really supporting the market. But I'm, I'm, I, I'm hesitant to get jump back in because my big picture analysis is saying, okay, price levels are good, market is dead set, well supported. But hang on, I'm smarter, you know, I know some other things I need to look at, which I know major turning points are usually accompanied by capitulation, which is volume. You look at the VIX, there's another one, and, and usually there is credit stress. And although we've had credit stress here, which now the lows, as I said before, back here, look, nothing, hardly anything, nothing mm. here, nothing, nothing. So basically, um, there's the absence of credit stress here. So is it safe to get back into the market? Is the worst behind us? Although the market is very well supported, the usual sentiment markets, which is capitulation and volume and, and credit stress, which is just a blowout in the junk to treasury treasury spread, they are not in place. So I, for me, I recommend to myself, Brent, Brent, I'm recommending, I'm talking to you, Brent, because this is not investment advice, it's purely education. I recommend, Brent, stay calm, sit on your hands, be cautious. And also, don't forget, prices have hit extreme decimal resistance, and they are yet to complete the rotation back to their pivot point. Don't forget that, right? Don't forget this, right? Mm. This is the fingerprints, the footsteps of the gods, right? Sure, we've got really good support here, but I'm not convinced because I don't see um, the credit stress here. I don't see that the volume capitulation here. And I also know it hasn't completed its rotation back. So for me, I've got to be cautious. So that's the indices. And, and Andrew, you asked me whether you know, um, my market ladder or my multiple time frame pivot points, whether they can work on any other market apart from the yeah. Well, let's have a look. This is the cash commodities. <laughs> look at this, hey? Commodities. They tried to get through resistance, they couldn't handle it. And where'd they go? Once markets. Back to the pivot. Yeah, they rotate back to their pivot point or value area and they know what it is. This is like 2016. It's been known for six years, everyone. It's been known for six years. And then the new period starts. So we, we make some new calculations. We go, what's the highest high for the last 10 years? What's the, the lowest low for the last 10 years? Where did it close on the 10, 10 years? Average that and you get 49, uh, 490. And then what was that range? Put half of it up there, 660. Take half down here, 320. And where did the market find support? <laughs> On 320. Mm. Big picture, big picture. Treasury yields, oh, 30 years. I'm showing you here 23 years worth. Look at this, support level supported for so long. And guess what happened when, it, when the support gave out? Where did it go? Down to the extension here. Found support, rallied back up. And we started a new 10-year um, period. Market rotates back to its, its pivot point of value area before we have a trend continuation. And the trend continuation is down. It finds support. It bounces, 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 breaks down. And then in the new decimal, which is in 2020, she broke down. Um, and, and there was a big spike down because the, the big money guys, they know what this level is. Big spike down, rallies up, hits resistance, goes through. And where's the find support? Where's the finding support? On the decimal support level. And look here, markets rotate back to their value, value area, back to their pivot points. Comes up, retests, and up she goes. Hasn't hit 4.5%. It's come up a little bit here, but the market is aware of this level up here. Unbelievable. Gold, if you trade gold, I don't need to explain. It's unbelievable. Mm. Unbelievable. Well, prices remain under nineteen hundred dollars. I'd expect um, the next stop to be fifteen hundred on gold. Copper, look at that. Couldn't get through it. Where did it, where did it revert to? Back to its pivot level. Well, it's above sixty nine hundred. I would expect to see prices um, approach back to nine nine thousand eight hundred. But if they can't hold six thousand nine hundred, my next target is three thousand nine hundred on copper. 
This is the Shanghai Composite Index. The poor Chinese market is just meandering. It's going sideways. Mm. But look at these levels. It, 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 it respects these levels. Look, this is the 10-year pivot point. This is probably 2018. This level has been known for eight years. And look at here. We've got a new level, the new uh, decimal period. Look, it's all this mucking around. Where is it mucking around? It's mucking around the We're pivot, the pivot. Yeah. pivot point. Look at that. So what remains of the 3,400, um, the Shanghai index is under pressure, and the next stop will be 1,700. If it can stay above 3,400, we know in the big picture the target is 5,000. Crude oil, look at this. The pivot points completely bookend crude oil. Sure, we, we spiked under here when it went on oh, futures, it went negative, I think, from memory. Um, hmm. uh, and when it rallied, guess where it, where it mucks around? At the pivot points. Resistance comes back, blows through it, tests, rallies, support, bang, rejection back here. Well, it's under 110, I expect uh, crude oil to rotate back to 70. Uh, for those who trade the US dollar index, look at that. Support, support, rallies up, resistance, blows through, come back to test it. If it holds 106, next stop, 122. Bitcoin, poor old Bitcoin. <laughs> You probably have heard it from many people, but if you haven't heard it, you can hear it from me. I think Bitcoin is just the modern day's tulip mania. Um, I think probably the best thing about Bitcoin is the um, you know the blockchain technology. I love the idea of um, things being decentralized, um, but too many bad bad actors have just just um, you know ambushed the whole crypto. Um, but regardless, it's this. Trying to show people here that this tool that I use, the big picture tool, and essentially pivot points, which is they're not mine, they're, they're ancient, right? They work across all markets. And look here, when the market blew up through this extended um, resistance, guess where it came back to? Unbelievable. Rallied up again, and guess where it's paused for a while? This is a 10 year um, res uh, resistance extension. And guess where it went? When it fell through, where did it stop? It stopped at the decimal resistance level here, 19,000. Hmm. And if it remains under 19,000, where's the next target, the big picture target? It's 9,100. Pivot points, big picture stuff. So, so the multiple time frame fractals work on other markets apart from indices. Yes, of course they do. Thumbs up. <laughs> so. It does pay to know what the fractals are saying. You know, we have to ask ourselves, are we listening? Are we seeing the big picture? And um, I, I really would encourage every trader to um, to do the work. Um, they're really simple um, to calculate these levels and just be aware of it, right? Just occasionally look up from your picnic blanket and look down the highway and see if you can just see anything big, black, and men menacing <laughs> rumbling down at you. And you know what? I think you'll um, thank yourself uh, for occasionally putting your head up and having a look. Um, so that's it. And uh, and, and before I, I go, just, just a shameless plug. I have sure. a weekend workshop coming up this weekend where I'll be teaching my uh, universal trader short-term um, methodology, which, in my opinion, uh, is a master class in, uh, in, in strategies. Um, and that's the link for it for those who'd like to see it. So that, that's my presentation. So um, if you like, I can stop sharing this screen or would you, will you um, switch it off? For? Yeah, you can stop sharing it as well so you can see me again. Okay. That was um, that was brilliant. Thanks, Brent. I wasn't expecting you yeah. to go to that kind of level and the, the content you were sharing there was incredible. So... Uh, I'm no sure worries. everyone agrees that um, thank you. You went above and beyond, I think, for that. So I appreciate it. Um, so I've got a, a couple of questions here. Um, I'd like to know, what do you think about that, Eric? I think Eric was uh, had the question about how do you project resistance when price is never reached? Uh, I thought that was fascinating. So simple. So thanks, Brent. Uh, so we've got a question here from Tim. G'day, Tim. Let's put this one up on the screen. Tim is a big fan of pivot points too. Do you ever use three periods back? Fantastic, Tim. Yes, I do. I do it on the, on the yearly. So what, what Tim's referring to is that um, what I've shown you there is static 
pivot points that it, like one week, one month, one quarter, one year, one decimal. What I do for the yearlies is I'll use um, three pivot. I will, I will also use three pivot back. So um, today, um, this year is 2022. So for my three year pivot point, I will say what was the highest yearly high for the last three years of 2021, 2020, and 2019. What's the lowest low of the last three years? And I take what the close was on the 31st of December, 2021, and um, create like a three period or a three year pivot point and, and overlay the range either side. And, and for those people who do the work, you'll actually see the market's also very respectful of particularly the uh, indices are very respectful of the three-year the three-year uh, pivot points. Right, Thank you. interesting. So when you were talking about uh, decennial at the very beginning, I I actually assumed you meant a rolling ten-year window. No, no, it's static. Yeah. But why is that? Does it just work better when you when you reset it every um, oh. every ten no, years? No, I've never even thought about. I've never even thought about modifying. To me. Call me simple, but the period is if it's a day, it's a week, it's a month. Um, as Tim alluded to, um, you, you can change those static periods to being rather than one monthly period or one quarterly period, you go three quarterly periods. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, three quarterly periods also work really well in the indices too, as a heads up. Um, I've never thought about doing a rolling, um, you know, 10 years. And quarterlies, oh, to me, quarterlies is purely calendar calendar quarterlies, you know, January to March, you know, April to June, you know, et cetera. Yeah. Okay. So if you're, say, perhaps a swing trader who uh, trades, takes trades that last, I don't know, three to five days or whatever, do you think they need to look at the decennials as well? Or what kind of range do you think would make sense oh, for that type of trading? Really, yeah, I don't think so. We've discussed that before. It's too far. It's too far. Yeah, it's it's right. got to be... Gotta be um, so it's got to be appropriate, you know. I'm looking at the ten year stuff purely for share investments, right? Not for my trading. No way. What I'm doing for trading, um, you know, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a basically I trade off end of day bars. You know, I trade a portfolio of strategies that um, go over a portfolio of time frames, periods, um, from short term, medium, long term, um, and depending on what model my strategies are, I do look at some longer term stuff. You know. Uh, and my short-term stuff doesn't particularly focus on long-term stuff, but my longer-term stuff will have longer-term stuff in it. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, thank you very much for sharing all of that, Brent. That was uh, fascinating. So I've got a lot of testing to go and do now, and uh, <laughs> we've got a couple of thanks in the chat as well here from Eric, said it was really interesting. We'll take a look into this. Yeah, um, it's, it's, it's worth the effort. And, um, yeah. Yeah, you, you know, my big thing is is look backwards to go forwards. Look backwards in terms of old ideas, because you know it's robustness that keeps us alive. Like trade trading trading will never ever ever um, leave you uh, bruise free. Right, we always get bruised. Mm -hmm. right? You know, I, I'm yet to find a way to. I cannot make money without losing money. Right, and I get bruised. Right, and and when you get bruised regularly, particularly as a trend trader, you know it can, it can test your fortitude about your belief in what you're doing. And one of the, for me, one of the core corner pillars that gives me confidence that, 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 you know, I want to stick with my strategy is how long has my idea been in the market? Mm. You know, has it been around for like one day or one year, one day or one decade, one day or one century? And I'm not, I'm not saying pivot points are a century old, but they've been, I think, I think the first recorded instance of, of pivot points, the, some of the first, first um, traders on the pit on the floor. Mm. Like so, pivot points are over sixty years old, and, yeah. and um and 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 yeah. So that's just that's, that's a reason why they, they they deserve our respect and deserves every trader's um you know interest in it to have a look and to see whether it can add value to what they do. Yep. Well, what a way to uh, wrap up the show today. That was an excellent um uh, bit of inspiration and and summary. So thanks very much, Brent. So. Um, if uh, if they want to find more information from you, they can go to the website indextrader.com.au. And I've also, if you're interested in looking at the 
uh, details on the workshop that Brent is running this weekend. I just posted those in the chat as well, or you can just get it from, I think it's on the top of the Index Trader website. So go check that out. And also I recommend having a look at Brent's other working papers. Very interesting information in there as well, and it's all free, so uh, go and check that one out. So thank you very much, Brent, for uh, chatting with us today. So uh, such a great insight that you shared with us and that presentation, phenomenal. So thank you, and uh, please, everyone, give us a, a thumbs up for the video and make sure you subscribe and uh, hit the bell button to you're, be notified. You're welcome, Andrew, and thanks for having me. So, uh, yeah, we've got some thanks in the chat. We'll finish off with a couple of thanks here. So Tim said... Uh, thanks. Good questions, Tim. Thank you. Uh, Chris says, um, great insights, Brent. Thanks. Eric uh, had a couple of great questions today. Uh, so thank you very much as well, Eric. So um, thanks again, Brent. I wish you all the best and uh, we'll catch everyone in uh, two weeks time for the next show. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.